welcome to the Brookfield Sentinel's meeting of August the 7th. Please, uh, those who wish to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome. And with that, I'd entertain a motion to approve the payroll warrant of August the 1st, 18, for $112,524.60. Approve an expense warrant for August 1st, 18, for $20,878.09. A debt warrant for uh, August the 6th, 18, for $273.54 and approve an expense warrant for 8718 for 30,375 and 30 cents. You have that motion? I second it. Any discussion on this topic? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No one is opposed. Motion passes. Announcement, please note uh, time estimates on construction of the new handicapped accessible town hall bathroom is as follows. The work is established to begin on September 24th and end on November 24th, prior to the start date, there will be an in-house construction that will impact the existing kitchen. The agenda for tonight begins with a vote to accept the National Hazard Mitigation Plan. And Adam, I turn to you. Well, my name is Adam Bernard. I'm from the CMRPC, Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. Well, I was here several months ago to introduce you to a draft plan of the hazard mitigation uh, update. Um, this is a five-year update. Um, your current past plan expired. Um, we've been working closely with Cindy Thompson, Herbert Chaffee, and Chief Peter Martell from the town to update the plan. I have a copy of the plan. If you'd like to have that. Um, I'll be posting the plan as it stands um, tomorrow morning. Um, I'm here today to ask you to formally adopt the plan. Mima and FEMA have both um, reviewed the plan. FEMA has eternally adopt, approved your plan pending the adoption. Uh, I believe Karen has a copy of the adoption certificate. If you decide to vote on that today, get your signatures and I will send this plan back to FEMA for their formal adoption. So it's one more check um, to go through. Um, I just briefly highlight some of the findings. Um, Brookfield, some of the biggest risks we identified in Brookfield were winter storms, kind of standard, uh, severe thunderstorms, hopefully not tonight, um, <laughs> wind and flooding. Um, those, those tend to be the biggest uh, natural hazards. So we identified several strategies, um, just highlight a couple uh, briefly. Uh, we identified about 30 strategies, but I'll just highlight a couple. Uh, implement a vegetative debris management program to reduce debris and thereby mitigate risk of stormwater flooding, riverine flooding, and winter storm damage. Um, another uh, strategy to inventory your shelter emergency resources so you know what's on hand when an emergency happens. Um, continue to support the regional highway equipment sharing co-op. Uh, and also to another one, incorporate flood protection measures um, when critical structures located in the floodplains are rebuilt or renovated to try to limit the damage to flood. Um, it's a pretty comprehensive plan. It's approximately 90 pages total, not counting um, a couple of maps we produced for it. There are three maps and a fairly lengthy appendix with um, documenting the planning process, uh, gloss for terms, um, and a survey that was put out by CMRPC. Uh, there are a few dozen people that uh, completed the survey, and the survey results are in the plan also. Uh, do you have any questions for me about the plan? I'll turn to Peter for any comments. No. no. Stay the course. How many times we've done this with such a nice regional planning, but it's, it's a nice all-inclusive thing for something you know, somebody had to step in and put no background on it. It's a good, it's a good overall plan. Something that you know our member of local managers can review. And, Let's say look at things we don't like you mentioned, you know, building and zoning things when it comes to floodplain and how to long term react and more reaction because that's all we can really fund and focus on, but it's a good eye opener for some things down the road. So. I think it, one thing that would be important is getting copies of it made up, Karen, for the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and the Advisory Committee so that they understand where some of the requests for support, whether it's for infrastructure, whether it's for equipment, that would be great. 
I don't know that you need like copies for every member, but at least get them a courtesy copy of each. I'll be, I'll post it on our website. I'll send you a copy. Um, yeah, yeah maybe that's even a better. Well, that's what I'm saying. One yeah. copy for each committee. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. FEMA is supposed to send you a copy once they have their final approval. Um, so you'll have that also. There'll right. be another email. I believe Karen's on the list, and I believe Sydney's on the list to get the the email to the final and, approval. And this is a pretty safe assumption that, um, given that we work with you all both on this and with a lot of our CDBG work, that we're trying to align some of the work yes. amongst that. Okay. Okay. Some of that's going way back to Bill Scanlon as a history, just keeping knowing what we're interested in and what we need, and all of a sudden you get a call from somebody that are like, hey, this just came on the radar that we really have to go out and right. you work with us on that. So that's the timing is good too because the federal government uh, announced a series of grants today, uh, hazard mitigation grants mostly for flood, and you have to have this in, in place. place, I think, pending. Yeah, it's not we won't be held just because it's being held up in the but the fact that it's in there, you have to have this in place before yeah. you can yeah. consider those grants. So having the last one never lapsed, this one's in the final phases. I forwarded that down to Cindy today. We've been actually we did one of those things years ago, but Harvey still has some flood areas that he'd like to address, and, and some of these federal grants are within that window. So Great. the timing's good. Okay. Great. So I did entertain a motion to approve to sign. You have that motion. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No one's opposed. Motion passes, and we will sign a document. Thank you. Cindy's not here tonight, so you don't need a copy tonight, do you? Okay. Okay. Uh, Linda. Linda's not here tonight. Yeah, I can wait on it. Okay. Okay, we'll put that back in this folder for Linda to, to sign. Oops, some stuff. All right, so then the next is, I don't know, I'll just fold this over. There we go. All right, so now the next on the list is a contract agreement between the town and Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. And this relates to the municipal vulnerability preparedness work. So any conversation around well, that? that one you attended, we had, uh, probably Andrew Law, Andrew Law's going yes. to go lead for the town uh, right. to, to get out of that project. It came around, we've never been involved in it before, we heard things about it, and uh, we had an impromptu meeting at the highway garage in Spokema, and we were very optimistic. And we have, we apply for things all the time, and occasionally we get them, occasionally we don't, and all of a sudden we get notified. Oh, we did. you've been approved for 28000 and then you look at other communities much larger that have these in the past that didn't get nearly that much. So I was the original point of contact on it when it was just, okay, that's good, one more grant, we'll go to the pile. And, um, we threw out a lot of ideas where we could approach this with Andrew. And when it got approved by the state, I don't know what they were looking for us to do. We looked at um, taking care of more dead trees, taking care of roadside debris, and also you know, reforestation from a lot of trees that we've had to take down. We talked about expanding the water system. I don't know where the federal government would, or the state, I don't know which one they're targeting. So well, I, well, and I, I think, I think the, if we I think get this contract in, that's, that's the obvious first yeah. start, but then finding out, okay, what did they like about our application that we can act on? All right. I, I, I'll actually, the, the, the contract, the, 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 the grant that you received um, will be for two, two things. There'll be an MVP workshop um, that's, um, that's 71 towns have completed this workshop already. Uh, another, I want to say 60 to 70 are in this current phase, so it's about 40% of the state uh, is taking part in this program. Uh, Brookfield is a little bit different as they have an add-on piece, that's why you got more than most other towns. Uh, let's do a survey to um, survey the south side of the Quaybog River um, to expand, see if you want to expand your water service to that end. Yep. So that's, that's the reason you're getting more um, than most other towns. Makes so sense. take that extra step. Uh, most towns, it's just the workshop. And I know some of the more concentrated communities have had a, some challenges maintaining their water supply through wells. I know Anatomical recently had to drill pretty deep in order to 
to maintain their, mm -hmm. their water over there. Yeah, we, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't get ahead. 20,000 is the first of many steps to get a proposal to get right. anything like that. But you know, we could hope that we could, we could get this project get well on its way and hand it down to the next generation of all of us to see this through. I mean, from, right. from, a, from a public safety standpoint, just having any type of municipal water over there. And Cindy was part of that initial workshop maybe we have on MVP. She's one of those residents that I don't find right here, her well runs dry. Exactly. Any of those shallows. So yep. to start mm -hmm. anything, you know, whether it's you know, satellite or seismic well identification and when we did the right, stand, it would be a when we did the stand yes. replacement over there, that was a couple million just to have stand tech put up a new stand tech. Right. And we're looking at all of these. So we're talking many years, but this it's just amazing. Twenty eight thousand, yeah, to, to get something rolling on this I think would be phenomenal. At least get some feasibility work done and, and some some initial Yeah. Um, what we once need. I'm sure go through the process of the workshop, which is a pretty regimented process. It's step by step and you come out with a report at the end. Um, you become a cert MVP certified town that makes you eligible for MVP action grants. It also gives you um, what we call them bonus points to other grants, for example, Mass Works grant. Um, you get a kind of a, a tiebreaker point if you have this in place, it gives you an edge to other towns that don't have this. So. It's a good thing to have. It's an interesting process. Um, I helped uh, do a regional workshop last year with Grafton, Millby, and Northbridge. It pulls in a large chunk of the community um, from various backgrounds, um, just talking about the type of um, problems that the town faces with hazards and how to try to plan for it in the future. It's a different program in that sense where most programs and plans are kind of dealing with the last few years and short term. MVP is more of a long term. What's, what is thing going to be like on the ground 25 years, 50 years, 100 years from now? It's a long-term planning process. Well, if you look at what Webster's going through right now, it's time for us to do some thinking and make sure we've got our act together. What exactly is Webster going through? The, the tornado hit the other oh, morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we, I mean, Sturbridge had their issues yep. a couple of years ago. Three now tornadoes Webster, in I mean, two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Usual. Yeah. Perspective-wise, they're in county year 2018, the sixth one states. To that 12 tornadoes. Put that in perspective in calendar year 2018, the state of Oklahoma has had 12 tornadoes. <laughs> Amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting, Peter. It's um, one point on this, and I, I'm not trying to evade it, but when we first it was just a shot in the dark, they needed a point of contact. I looked away apparently at some point during that meeting, and I was named the point of contact. Now that's actually got legs. And we're talking about real money and everything, whether that shifts to the board. I think eventually, if, if we, when it eventually turns into a water project, it would obviously go to the board of water commissioners. But I think right now, um, I don't know how the contract's written out there, but I think that needs to shift to the selectman's office as far as overall thing, as opposed to a little bit beyond. You know, they need a point of contact initially, that was fine, but now we're talking about, yeah. you know, about contracting with. Somebody, so right, it's right. more of the board's. Yeah, well, and, and, yeah, and uh, should we motion and, pa and pass this? Linda is the point of contact okay. based on this. Then I, can, change, and, I, was, I was getting some stuff initially, and then it became both. And not knowing what it was, if it was for risk reduction with, with trees and whatever, that would be one thing. But now we're talking about a multi potential multi project. And this is, you know, whether or not this gets handed off to the grant writer. Eventually, like that could be. Because yep. even if he's talking about a workshop availability, you know, that's something mandated that one or two people go to, and that, that becomes a schedule. Right. The, the, work, the workshop, we, the state wants at least 30 people at the workshop. Okay. It's not always practical, but yeah, that's their goal. It's, it's a good sure. size workshop. Yeah. Right, but um, we, could, we could try to pull in folks again from some of the committees that, oh, that, yeah. that have. The Especially if this is a target too, if you know, right. we local involvement and we put the word out mm -hmm. for the residents of South Park Hill for lack of a better, you know, this is the long term. People that are that moved in and plan on staying. You know, you know what we might even consider is for that meeting, um, so how big a workshop, or how, how long a workshop is it? There's two options, either one day of eight hours long, oh, or wow. two, two, four hour, two days, four hours each. So it's it's pretty intense. Wow. It's it's 
it's yeah, a hands-on do, work, workshop. Yeah, you want to do it over a month. And, right. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of trying to coordinate. And, I mean, if we're going to be focused on the south side of the river, see if maybe we could actually use Nanatonqua's meeting space. Maybe. And meet over there and see if we could get encourage some of the citizens over that side of the river, if it's in their backyard, to yeah. actually go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Over at you decide as your point contact once you get the contract set. Um, Andrew Lowell will be the one to really to help right. guide you through the whole process. Uh, I'll be there assisting him. I've been trained in the process. You have, uh, everybody at CMRPC will help. Brookfield has been trained. You have to be state trained um, to run the workshops. So yeah. it's, um, Excellent. It's a good so, program. So with that, uh, if there's no, no more discussion, then... Um, I'll, I'll make uh, a motion for, to, uh, for us to sign, to sign the... Uh, Contract agreement between ourselves and CMRPC yes. related to the uh, municipal vulnerability preparedness uh, program. Okay. And I'll second that. Any discussion? Further discussion? Seeing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion, those Great. opposed, no one's opposed. Motion passes, and this will be for a moment to sign. Great. All right. Well, thank you. Adam, thanks. Safe ride back to the city. Okay. All right, so next on the agenda is Brookfield Volunteer Discussion. Um, Peter had sent in a note, but I just, yeah, no, Peter. Peter O'Connell. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Peter. Peter. Sorry. You're, you're on your way, Peter. Thank you. Um, um, Dan Kane is doing or has been doing a survey work. It suggested that they did not receive a master plan committee in, input. I, on behalf of the group that was meeting under the master plan, um, in fact, did provide the survey and get the survey out. Uh, uh, and again, the, uh, Danielle is looking to uh, recommend or promote volunteering within the town on the different town boards and whatnot. We do have an issue with respect to the master plan and getting that reconstituted. Um, unfortunately, with uh, Dr. Levine's death and some other things that happened, Phil's passing, uh, we lost the opportunity to have a number of members and we did lose momentum. Um, the good news is uh, with the open space and that activity later this year, it would say that we would come back to the master plan committee or reconstituting the master plan committee to pick up the ball and, and continue on. The good news out of what work was done is that we did do an inventory of the original master plan of what was done and not done. And we were at, the, at a point to then survey the different committees as to their position with that uh, inventory. Um, so this would be a good good place to start once we uh, get moving. So, and I do have a question surrounding this and, and I think something that might generate more interest is if, I know I've heard from a number of different people support for like an economic development committee mm -hmm. and, I, and some of the larger towns have them. And I'm wondering if when this is reconstituted, if we include that aspect of it in the charter, yep. because then, you know, it makes it clear that it's not just about the longer term planning, it's also about, okay, so since we say this is what we want for the character of the community, how do we, you know, how do we leverage the vision that people have for the town into something that actually turns into dollars and cents for the town as well? You actually do something. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so my, my logic or thought process is that the open space stuff will re get reconstituted November time frame because that's okay. when the money becomes available. Okay. So we, we've got to do phase two of the open space where the grant monies are available in December. So November, we get our act together. We, uh, SAMR PC has committed uh, direct technical assistance to us to support that. And so with that, gather the folks up again that we're working on the open space, apply for the grant, get the grant, and do the open space piece of the, the master plan, which fills, fulfills the open space need, which lines us up for two things. One, moving forward with the master plan as it relates to open space, and it puts us in line for additional monies. And so during the phase one activities around open space, there was conversation around the rec committee and different ideas as far as ball fields and growing playgrounds and those kinds of things. Um, and so we need to think about where the open space activity moves. And so maybe pe people will move in that direction, the rec group moving in a, a direction to support that. At the same time, getting the other folks to jump onto the master plan activity 
to continue right. that. And if you throw the uh, economic development piece into that, that's an additional good thing to I think it to would incentivize that. people to get involved pull, in it, I pulls think. It together. So again, we've got some opportunity. So again, I did fill fill in for both open space and master plan for Danielle, Danielle's work. And so hopefully we'll have some volunteers moving forward okay. on that topic. That was what I thought we wanted to talk about. Karen, is that? Yeah. That's it, all right, on that topic. So then it's to entertain a uh, uh, Carrie Von Hall to. Oh, yeah, I thought we had voted this already. That's all right. No, nope. okay. nope, you're going to do this in a second. Okay. Um, so with that, we do have a volunteer for the uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee and Carrie Von Hall, and I'd entertain a motion to appoint Carrie to that I'll, position. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No one's opposed. Motion passes, and I will pass it to Beth to sign. Awesome. That's great. I know uh, Peter's been in touch with her, so... Um, we can hopefully get her integrated pretty yeah. pretty quick. So. All right, all right. So um, that takes care of that one. So I think I can find the agenda again. The next thing on the topic is the Tobin Beach discussion, and I just wanted to f uh, fill in the board with respect to the campground. Uh, first of all, the campground is owned, uh, it's 15 acres, it's on Quaybuck Pond, or accesses Quaybuck Pond, Pine Lane, um, and it is in possession of the town. So I want to make sure everyone's very clear that the town owns the, the Adena Connected Burial Site. Um, the idea was uh, we had monies enough to take down all but three buildings, and we have a need to t uh, take down an additional three buildings on that site. The estimate to take those three buildings down is some $12,000. What I was thinking to do until we appointed a grant person um, was to move forward uh, lining up that $12,000 to be matching money for a mass historical grant to continue the work um, on the site for signage and uh, the road, roadway and the like. What I'm thinking is that we delay this a year because the, uh, if to, uh, I'd meet with the Historic Commission, in fact, I asked to meet with them already on September 7th uh, to talk about the next phase. And my idea now, especially with uh, uh, Kathy on board, is to kind of shuffle that towards Kathy as far as um, asking the town at a town meeting appropriate that we ask for the $12,000 to be matched with um, some $12,000 for a, a, a UMass piece and the U UMass piece would be the signage that we talked about helping with the roadway definition to make sure we, we believe, at least from discussions, we believe the roadway that we originally laid out can be changed and, and be different because we did find graves. Right. And so we, we need to move it, so we need a little bit of survey work, we need a little bit of mass historical, um, not mass historical, UMass archaeology to help us uh, lay out that, that route. And then uh, with that, to get some signage, to get some grad students to help us with signage. So uh, I haven't talked to Kathy. I need to catch up with her, but she's busy with this other grant that she's working on. So once she clears from that, my plan is to chat with her and chat with the Historical Commission to say it would be fall next year that we would see if we could line that up to get 12000 of the town's money for the teardown, which would be matched by $12,000. And again, I've chatted with Eric Johnson, UMass Archaeology, that that's about right as far as what it would cost. To get their to, portion of the work done. To get their portion of the work done. So something for, uh, again, a year and from And is now. it just that we're, we're going to miss the cycle, or is it yeah, just because yeah, so, the money set aside now? Yeah, so what happens is they, they come out in November for requests for, uh, for applications for grants. Okay. And then you have to have everything in by February, and then March they approve it, and then you have until... June of the next year to get it done. So they want us to take those buildings down in the winter time. So if we if we look at waiting one cycle, we can be in line. I think. Okay, I'm sorry, I just got confused. So November is when we apply for yep, the grant. apply, and it has they, to be finished by the June of the next year. Oh, so like it'd have to be June of this year coming. Yeah. And so that's fast. Yeah. And so it's yeah, like, let's take the take the foot off the accelerator. Yeah, we would have to get wait our act together. If we're going to do it during winter time. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so it, it would say November. It's a go slow you, to go fast. Yes, and again, there's not nothing's going to change. The Nipmunk clan will take it for their ceremonies every once in a while, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, people are walking through there, and, and that's a good thing. So right. we'll just leave it as is for now. For now. Yeah. Okay. And we have commitments from the highway to do a couple of bushwhacks and keep the grass down and, and okay. that sort of thing. So. Yep. So I think that that's the plan, and I know, like I say, I'll talk to Historical Commission and I'll talk to uh, Carrie uh, and, or uh, Kathy. And, and I'll send a note to, so it, if we're going to be waiting, and it probably wouldn't be something that we address at this town meeting coming, but probably the June town meeting. Yeah. Okay. So we know about that. Um, probably need to let capital improvement know that yep. that's part of the plan is making that application. Yeah. So what I was going to do is um, uh, receive the document to, to do the capital improvement thing. So I think yep. what I'll do is I'll fill it out as a straw dog yep. and give that to both historical and capital improvement, okay. FYI, yep. but then put the timeline of a year November. Right. And then everybody, hey guys, when we get deep to breath. that point, yeah, right. deep breath. But, okay. but again, be the plan. Um, for the future. Again, we've got to, at some point, again, a good reason for delay is get the master plan back together, get the economic development discussed, and then maybe um, it's, it's a piece of some sort of economic development strategy. Right. Okay. All right. Great. Any other? Other? Um, oh, um, no. Okay. <laughs> well, it's it's a it's a question. Well, it's actually a question of coordination. I had I had uh, uh, somebody from the board of health ask like, what's the best way for us to coordinate some of the areas where we have overlapping responsibility? Hmm. Um, and, and my suggestion was that we just that they just contact Karen and ask for a joint meeting. Right. Right. Yeah. So, because I think there are some things that just would work better if we just all sat down in one room together. Yeah. Um, and I think that's important at this point. Um, the other piece is, is that we've, we've had a couple of discussions. I know you sent me a clerk um, job description. And we, we, I was going to ask you too, when did you want me to, it's going to be municipal clerk unless you wanted to tweak it. Yeah, well, I would I would just put it as municipal clerk with, with primary board responsibilities being uh, planning board and zoning board of appeals, but with other, supporting other evening committees as 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 requested, and then we can get that and as as, as requested and as available because the primary funding for the position would be coming from the planning board and the zoning board of appeals, uh, but then we also can can backfill that as needed if if there uh, if the support requirements are greater than. Uh, what's necessarily budgeted just for those two committees. Well, I know definitely that the uh, bylaw committee does. I know. They, they want and need somebody to help them out. They have a budget. Right. And then uh, advisory has a small budget, where and they want support as well. But they already have someone. But they, no, they know. Oh, she's gone. She's not available. No, she's not available this year. So they said they wanted in on that. Oh, okay. So, that, yeah, because I did write back to him, and he didn't, he didn't tell me she was gone. But well, okay. Lee Farr told me that, that she's not available. So okay. they're looking for somebody. So they would contribute a port their budget as well right. to the kitty. Yeah. So um, so the person can just and it's very typical. Like in the environment I work, we have different charge codes for different departments when we're supporting. Sure. It's the it's the same sort of thing. The person would just you know fill out their timesheet in a way that made it obvious which which budget it comes from. So sure. um, and I think we should. I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and and just post it as a. Um, or get the job, yeah, the job posting. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Right. Yes. Yeah, just, um, just post it maybe in through Facebook and online. And let's start with Facebook and online, online and give it like a week or two to see if we get any applicants. And if we don't get any applicants within a week or two, then let's expand to print. Okay. Very good. Um, Save a few bucks. And um, do I have I do have one, one, one other other. Uh, didn't have the meetings with the accountant and treasurer. Um, as of things happened, and with that, I did based on their recommendations. I called Tom Scanlon, and Tom Scanlon will be providing this board a recommendation for the audit and scope. And his um, recommendation is to do something in the November time frame. Okay, 
or begin in the November time frame? Begin in the November time frame. Yeah, okay. basically taking advantage of FY18. Okay. So, right, because you want to do, you want to do 18. With, with a look back. With a look back. Yeah, and, and again, more focused on 18. His recommendation was since we've paid to do a lot of work from 14 to 17, and that work is done, it's more an 18 stake in the ground looking back to those prior years, following the money. Actually, that makes good sense because we should have, based on our filing and the fact that we just reconciled everything through, through 17, 17. We, we ought to have had a decent starting point from a standpoint of a cash balance. And so then that gives them the time, that, that aligns everybody with, now we have to get 18 done in time for both town meeting and to do the audit. That was and his then, recommendation. That's awesome. I yep. like that. Yep. And it'll keep a good forward momentum and it won't slow us down right. for getting the mm -hmm. 18 reconciled. Right. And Carrie has some concerns as to some documentation. Monica uh, provided, um, and Keith provided the documentation. So it seems like everything's in place for the to continue on the strategy of October, October 30 to have things in place for the Schedule A for FY18. Great. So. Good progress. Okay. So, any other other? Seeing none, uh, correspondence. We have a request from Brookfield Congregational Church. Margaret um, has a, uh, one of the mission people want to reconstitute the crop walk in town. Uh, this is something that had been going for a number of years in another town, and they had stopped it. Uh, and what the crop walk did is it provided monies to the local food pantry. So Margaret is concerned and uh, wants to reconstitute it. The idea would be that they would walk laps Central Street, Common Street, and just uh, as a part of the, the walk. She'd be working with uh, the chief uh, as far as the walk, the timing of the walk, and the... And the uh, the arrangements and whatnot, but she's asking for permission to do a crop walk in and around the common on October the 13th. So I put a motion forward that we uh, encourage the crop walk. I'll, I'll second that. And any other discussion? Seeing none. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion. And nobody opposed. Motion passes. So with that, I would look to a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Do you have any uh, public access anymore? We didn't, not tonight. Why is that? Is there a reason for it? Or? No, just Linda's not here, and we have a few things to get done, and we got them done. That's not a good reason. Well, well for, me, it's, for me, it's good enough, David. For me, David.